them being leader, admired, and become a role model. Now I'll come to the background of our institute. See, 400 plus nurses are there with basic and advanced travel training. Average experience two and a half years, 33% turnover per year. 75% not fluent in computer uses. Total about 300 plus beds, 11 OT. Always a rush and waiting period for IP to get admitted. Average waiting schedule for admission is three hours and need based four to six hours if it is not pre-scheduled. About 22 senior consultants with more than 15 years of experience, 32 consultants about less than equal to 10 years experience, 75 residents, 25% doctors not computer savvy, particularly the old generation. So largely clinical team not very computer savvy. This is uh, you know 150 by 150 uh, space during the night time. This is how our reception looks like. And during the daytime, Picture was taken in 2010, but it has not changed much. Only thing is we are able to manage in the same space three times more patients than that period. This is the scenario of medical oncology OPD. Typically in our MRD department, at that time 1,40,000 files were stored, now it is 1,80,000. This is how the files are managed. You know, in the morning time, those files are taken out, sent to OPD, and at the end of the day, sent back and placed there on the racks. We have now improved from that to this. Now, this is the first experiment with IT. So we have created an initial assessment unit. So every new patient comes and the patient is sent to this unit for doing the initial recording. Now it has two benefits. First is that the patient feels that I am being attended to right after reaching the hospital rather than waiting you know, outside the OPD queue uh, on the respective department's floor. So we take vitals and we take initial notes based on the templates defined and then we take a printout of that and attach to the file and send to the patient uh, along with the patient to the OPD. OPD process, you know, uh, normal OPD workflow but bottlenecks at every level. The registration happens, billing happens, file is retrieved, doctor consultation happens, patient goes to the phlebotomy for the lab sample collection, goes to radiology for any imaging, etc then visits the consultant again and there is a waiting time at every stage that we need to reduce. Now how is IT helping in all this? Appointment system to pre-book the appointment, about 60 percent you know, visits now are having pre-scheduled visits. So that is helping, you know, reducing the waiting time. There are SMS confirmations to the patients and in case a doctor decides to go on leave or something changes, we send an appointment that your appointment, send it to the patient that your appointment has been cancelled and please take a fresh appointment. Unfortunately, we are not such at such an advanced stage that we reschedule automatically. So we ask the patient to take a fresh appointment depending on availability. On arrival, patient is attended in the initial assessment unit. There is a queue management in the OPD. There is a queue management at the lab. Radiology is in prog progress. There is online patient record using you know, EHR system that we are using. The old records are scanned and made available for the online viewing of the doctors. We have been able to place computers in front of each and every doctor in the OPD. And generally what we have done, we have uh, created some wall mounted screens some uh, with bit of flexibility so doctor can see. And I am very happy when I go to the OPDs and see doctors actually referring to NCCN guidelines, etc. So at least some usage has started, you know, 100% EMR 
usage has not kicked in yet and I will come to the details subsequently. Online availability of lab reports and radiology reports is ensured 100%. So doctors can see and sometimes doctors scream about it. They say that now, you know, your radiologist tells or lab uh, people tell that report is available, you talk to the doctor and patient calls on doctor's mobile directly. And this has become a nuisance actually. But uh, there are pros and cons of uh, any initiative that you take. There, there are barcoded samples. So this is nothing very special. I think everybody is following it up now. It, automatically it goes to analyzer, results are captured and go to the approval. And we are experimenting with telemedicine as well. So patients from Nepal consult. I'll show some pictures. See the appointment is being taken in the OPD area. Now I'll tell you something about the uh, you know, uh, Dr. Agarwal is experimenting with uh, that laptop or uh, the tablet, somebody writing using intelligent pen. We have tried a different approach. What we have done is, uh, we have created OPD with the barcode, OPD card with the barcode printed on top of it. Now that card is a paper card. So that card goes along with the file to the doctor doctor writes with pen and paper and there is a transcriptionist sitting right next to the doctor. But rush is so much that most of the time transcriptionist cannot transcribe real time. So what she does, we have put in uh, scanners in each and every OPD. Those are very fast scanners. So the paper goes and zoom, it is scanned. Then the transcriptionist again scans that barcode you know, through the reader, so it stores that particular paper on the name of that CR number of the patient and it is stored in a central repository. Now we have created a batch program. So that program periodically scans that repository, opens the patient's scanned file, searches for the bookmark on the OPD card, goes to the very end and inserts there. So uh, it's a kind of uh, seamless continuation and patient's file gets updated as it is being uh, you know, uh, created and more pages are added. But we have not been able to do away with the paper file so far. So there is a parallel system going on. But at least in many cases, when the paper file is not reaching the OPD, a doctor is very comfortable opening the EMR, going to that scan doc, and see actually the file, scroll through and see the relevant papers and write on the page. So this much we are trying to experiment with. What we are aiming, you know, there is a vision behind it that there are four stages of automation. We cannot, you know, this is a brownfield hospital. We cannot straight away dictate that from paper today you go electronic tomorrow. So we have envisioned four stages. One is, you know, do the scanning and do the progressive scanning. So whatever new uh, pages are coming, just add those pages to the file. OPD cards are scanned at source and automatically merge them as I just mentioned. At stage three, the online and scan, scan records are merged together. What do I mean by this? Some doctors are writing electronically and some doctors are writing on paper. So whatever OPD notes are written electronically, those are converted into a PDF format and is stored in the same repository where that scanned OPD card was stored. So there is a common source and when merging happens, merging happens of both these types of papers. So one doctor is writing on paper, other writing electronically, it is actually all going to the same source and single version of truth is coming out. Then stage 4 will happen that at particular point we stop scanning that okay all the patients who got registered after let's say 1st January 2015 their files will not be scanned because we are all going automatic uh, online that stage has not come yet so we envision that sometime in future when we are able to deliver them good systems maybe some smart OPD systems and doctors are convinced to use online, we will stop scanning and by till then, we will carry on with this uh, dual system. So all these uh, subsequent slides are showing the details of uh, that vision.
I will come straight to the, you know, daycare process. So I tried to take some, you know, this Dilbert, uh, this uh, was very appealing, that I have been sitting here for ages and all I have managed to see is a spin doctor. So this is the state of affairs, the availability of clinicians time. What we have done, we have experimented a lot with daycare and uh, we have had fair amount of success there. Daycare was very heavily crowded uh, and uh, every two minutes, uh, you know, a patient will come inquiring when my turn will come. What we have created is a single dashboard showing all beds, waiting list, invoices. Patient, uh, transparent waiting list is there in the waiting area. So patient knows that I am fourth or fifth or sixth in the queue. So they are patiently waiting now. There is instant status update, you know, uh, using Android tablet. Somebody is walking around the beds and actually updating when patient is about to leave. Turnaround time reports are generated. So we are knowing exactly what is causing the delay in treatment. So this is the, uh, the monitor dashboard that is being used by the executive. So she knows how many patients have not paid the for the uh, service and we have, uh, you know, started administering the treatment so that when they leave, at least we are able to track them. Number of free beds, patients waiting, next bed availability, all these uh, things are automatically available, visible. This is the patient waiting monitor. So patients are, you know, quietly waiting and uh, waiting for their chance. It is showing only the list, there are two lists, the patient that will be seen in next one hour and the patients who will be seen in next two hours. Beyond two hours we are not showing, so they can go at ease and you know finish some other work and come back. This is how real time update is happening. This executive is going bed to bed and actually updating. The system is showing, there is a bed monitor, it is showing that in next 10 minutes this bed will be vacated. Now she physically goes there. Are you really vacating the bed? No, there is a delay of half an hour. Then there is a drop down list. What is causing this delay? Doctor did not come on time. Medicine did not come on time. Blood did not come on time. So we are tracking all these things and generating cumulative reports. Where are the bottlenecks? Also generate forms for each Sir? Actually, here it is opposite. We are having uh, slabs of rates. So, if you are availing a service four hours this much, six hours this much, so if we are able to reduce that time, actually, it is and it is helping the patient also because patient is paying less. Absolutely. So throughput increases. Now coming to IPD, so generally you know, it's a standard process, doctor advises the uh, discharge, discharge summary prepared, account for services happens, any discounts are approved, final billing takes place and physically patient is discharged. It used to take four to six hours, we have been able to reduce it to three, but it is still not very impressive. Now we are, how IT is helping in this process. Online bed management system has been. You have expected time and extra time. It can be researched also. Suppose your expected time in the hospital data is three hours. He is exceeded by one hour. Right. 55% extra bed of one. Mm -hmm. For a big hospital, for your purpose, it's not only the time, it's the research. How extra time. That is true, but generally what happens that every procedure has been uh, given a kind of category. So there is, let's say, chemotherapy, chemotherapy A, B, C, D. There are certain procedures that are done in half an hour. Some procedures take up to eight hours. So we slot the patient under a category and we charge that. If patient overstays for another one hour or two hours also, we don't charge. So generally, this is not the primary motive. Right. Now in IP, we have created bed management system. The reason for this is to rigorously monitor that after the discharge advice has happened, there are four steps that take place generally. 
One is that any consult referral that needs to happen before patient goes. Second, any medicine taking, uh, you know, either giving the medicine or returning the medicine. Third is the billing happens. And fourth is patient actually leaving the bed. And generally what happens, patient after finalization of bill, patient is still there for next three hours because his or her train is, uh, you know, uh, not on that time. So they are uh, comfortably sitting on bed. On humanitarian ground, we cannot evacuate them uh, because that is not proper. We don't even have the discharge lounge that we have been planning for long. We will eventually have and this problem will be minimized. But at least we need to track who all are overstaying, what are the reasons and how can we minimize at least the procedural delays at different steps. Sometimes discharge summary is not coming on time. Sometimes medicine is not coming on time. Those things at least we can control. And this has helped us significantly in reducing the discharge uh, time. Online discharge summaries are available. So you need not carry file from here to here to there. Uh, anybody can see it simultaneously. This is the bed management system I'm just trying to show. The red means the bed is occupied. Yellow means it is under uh, release. And green means it is available. Instantaneous update is happening. This is a online discharge summary, just a sample I have uh, shown. We are now creating 100% online discharge summaries. But this has not come easy. In 2009, when we started this journey, you know, it was so hazy. We had no direction. Lot of questions, inpatient, outpatient, integration, data migration, lab equipment interface, NABH certification, radiation, and lot of questions whether we go for custom development or we go for implementing a product. So long debate happened and things could have gone wrong either ways, you know, as Dilbert says. When you go for custom development, you uh, take two years in developing and product will become outdated in one year. You are still insisting to prove that yes, I have developed the system. Generally, it is not possible to develop a system in-house by a hospital. The hospital IT team is not that equipped. So you need to depend on an outsourcing vendor. Now when vendor comes, there will be scope management, requirement fluidity. They will crib every time you change from this to this. And you are not perfectionist, you don't know. that. Uh, so Madhubala, you can hint me when I am overstating my allowed time. Okay, making requirements explicit is an art. We are not expert on that. And what happens, large development partners can really rip us off on this. And the small partners, they are suffering with extremely poor project management. So we suffer either ways. Now let's go for a vendor system. Okay, so here is what Dilbert says. Now you are on my clutches. I will deal with you at my own terms, right? Acquisition of product is not enough. Implementation is equally painful. The small product companies will promise you moon and they will deliver you buggy box. Large companies will be inflexible. They might demand you changing your processes, which is not possible. So we selected certain platforms and decided to go for the uh, products, but we were running with five different uh, first, you know, first time full-fledged Vista commitment in India, first project for the IT partner also, he was also experimenting with us, first clinical software for our hospital, first time a complex integration, and first time doctors, nurses and paramedics seeing an IT system. So a lot of risks, right? We divided, decided a program structure, different committees were set up and then started on the journey. Now what happens? Very soon clinical pushback started coming. They complained too much of work. Okay. Concept of minimal data set was not understood. Alignment meetings went out of control and project adjourned sinodive. 
few months later. Okay, this was the response from the clinical fraternity. <laughs> right? Course correction happened. Our medical director took the lead, just like Dr. Deepak Agrawal did here. But the problem was all the vendors were pulling him left and right and he had no time for his medical practice. So, institute decided to bring a full-time CIO and here I came. So, try to do some course correction. We'll take one more minute and uh, go on. So, decided build infrastructure first, go, then go for clinical documentation, then go for non-clinical applications and build robust interfaces. We have scanned 180,000 paper files and now made them available for viewing. Okay, started with conference room pilot. Bring, uh, we brought all of them in the same room, simulated the whole process and then mock-up was there. We demonstrated all the activities to all the stakeholders together and then lights went green. I will not say we are 100% up there, this is a journey. We will carry on, lot to be done. You want me to stop here? Okay, five more minutes, good. So this all comes not only with application software, you need to actually build the backbone also. So this was the status of the servers, server room. You cannot run your dependable IT on this. So it had to be brought to this level. So entire server room uplift was done. This was the inside situation of the server room. You know, all our stuff lying there, it was all cleaned up. This is the rear view of the server racks. Server farm switch. This is how, you know, it is typically managed in hospitals. This has to be like this. That it is dependable, the communication does not fail. This is the core switch of the hospital, you know, from where the entire network is controlled. And this is not uh, very unusual. This is what is happening. But then if you want a dependable infrastructure, you have to come to this. These were all the edge switches, you know, that are connecting to the end machines. You need to bring them to this level. Safety and redundancy is required. Two UPSs were brought in so that all the servers were connected to dual power supply and human friendly gas was installed so that any fire etc. can be amicably tackled. Future plans, consolidate servers to the full virtualization, gradually replace workstations with the virtual desktops, replace current EHR system with iPads, hopefully that will work better and will be more acceptable. Telepresence to provide seamless experience, teleradiology to improve the preventive care and patients to receive lab radiology results at home via website. Lab we have started already, radiology we are working on. Thank you.